my work is um, space intensive. <laughs> it uh, it tends to consume whatever space is available. So economy of space in my practice is so important, and it probably is for yours as well because. When we have limited space and limited resources to, um, to accessorize that space, then uh, we need to think smart. We need to have services that are portable. Um, we need to have um, work surfaces that are um, flexible. So uh, that allows us to be able to uh, modify them to whatever those particular needs of the project are. And um, for the box beam project, we're using sawhorses because the building of it is made so much easier by having more room to work around the, um, that beam. When we're locked onto a table surface, we typically only have access from one or two, maybe three sides. But the beauty of a sawhorse is that we can walk and work all the way around it. It is um, a fast and economical way to set up a temporary workspace and it can travel with you. So um, I'm going to drop in some images of um, some inexpensive uh, saw horses that you can um, either uh, make yourself or buy pre-built. Um, but I really think that um, you hear me say this a lot. That we should scale the tools to whatever our needs are. But always try and buy the, the best tool possible and look for quality in the construction of those things at whatever um, price point you're buying, right? So, um, so the saw horses that I uh, use a lot on my studio are um, these folding saw horses here. Saw horses are going to have a rated capacity, um, uh, whatever they might have to be made out of. The, the, I really like these for reasons that I'm going to point out when we get down and take a closer look at them. But I just want you to see the way that they look when they're folded up, the way they look when they're extended. Um, and the downside of these is that, I mean, these are kind of heavy, but heavy often translates into uh, working capacity. You can also see that the legs that are folded inside have a tendency to drop out of the body of that, but that would be easily enough fixed with a zip tie or a little strap. But let's see the way that these are assembled. Now, um, these also can be real finger, finger pinchers, so I drop my first set of legs down and toe them back. I bring up my second set of legs like this, spread them, and very carefully, because if this closes on your finger, that's going to be a blood blister you're not soon going to forget. Bring my one side to rest, come around to the other side, and then I'm going to tow the legs out before I put my weight on top of that. So, um, again, good, steady, flexible work surfaces that allow us to work all the way around whatever it is that we happen to be posting up on there. I want to show you a, a less flexible, cheaper version of that. It's lighter in weight. It's made of much thinner material. But the, the cost difference between these foldable, portable sawhorses and this guy is about, uh, this is about three times the cost. So where you can pick a pair of these up for around 25 bucks. Um, it's going to cost you somewhere around um, 75 to 80 bucks for a pair of these. So, again, these are these are lighter duty. You can just see the leg construction here is stamped out of what I'm going to guess is probably it's a very thin gauge sheet metal. I'm going to say it's probably somewhere around 22 gauge, which is pretty lightweight. But again, it's like what are we going to be doing on this? So we're just going to be supporting. So sheets of plywood and some two by fours, or are you going to be building something that requires more support or more structure underneath it? So anyway, this guy, legs drop down, legs come up. This is not so much a finger pincher as a finger cutter, because these edges are a little bit sharp. 
So even though, it, it, but it really does rely on those legs being properly spread all the way out. So we've got tension on that cable that's joining the two sides together. And uh, again, advantages and disadvantages. Uh, I can't easily clamp to the surface of this, um, but I can easily clamp to the surface of this guy by reaching around because it has that solid body made out of sturdy material. So um, let's move in and take a closer look at um, some of the details on the sawhorse that I, the sawhorses that I chose to use for this project. You can find all kinds of plans online for um, building um, sawhorses out of um, two by fours and with uh, plywood gusset plates. And you can also buy um, little metal brackets um, and build your own sawhorses. Uh, but I have to tell you that uh, I find that a good pair of sawhorses are a really versatile tool that's worth making the investment in a, a better quality pair if it's within your budget. And um, so I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the, some of the reasons that I like uh, this particular models here. And to do that, I'm going to have to get on bended knee. And so I'm going to say that um, for anybody that has to work on their knees on a regular basis, it's really a worthwhile investment to invest in a pair of good quality knee pads because, um, uh, you know, um, uh, knee injuries are uh, chronic knee injuries. Um, result from constantly exposing your knees to hard surfaces and when you're working on things like hard floors it's one thing but when you're out on a site and working on something like gravel or a coarse aggregate surface it's just excruciating so anyway broke out the knee pad so that I can get down here and show you some of the reasons or features that I like this particular um, pair of sawhorses so um, first and foremost, they're really good sturdy construction. They're built out of um, a nice thick heavy gauge steel. They've also got a nice um, uh, uh, painted finish on the outside of them that's very durable and has lasted well. But the, the main feature that really extends the usefulness of these are the ability to extend the legs out. So if you're on an uneven surface, you can extend one leg out to compensate for that. If you have, if you're on a surface that is um, uniformly declining, you can raise two legs and lower two legs, and so you can make a lot of adjustments there. But where I've also used them a lot on projects around here in my home is when I'm doing something like working upstairs. I can have um, one at a lower height and another at a higher height to accommodate for the differential in the height of those stairs, and then work a ladder off the top of that. So. They are, the legs can be extended to different lengths. It also folds, the legs fold up and store inside of the belly of the um, sawhorse itself. And um, the, um, I've topped them with a two by four, which gives me a surface that allows me to um, screw down on it if I have to. It also gives me a surface that is less inclined to mar the surface of my work so that if I'm working with a, you know, a, a finer hardwood that I'm concerned about scuffing the surface of it up, this, the wooden tops on these um, remedy that problem of concern. And um, I also find myself frequently doing things like taping down cardboard onto these to give me a, a softer surface as well. So um, while we're down here, might as well look at C-clamps. If you're going to invest in C-clamps, I absolutely recommend that you buy um, better quality C-clamps because there's something that you need to perform well and you don't want to, ha what you end up doing is if you buy cheap C-clamps, you have a lot of useless clamps instead of a few good clamps, right? So among the things that we're looking for in a good quality C-clamp 
uh, or a bar clamp that we, uh, adjustable bar clamp like we have here is the range of motion that allows us to quickly move from one position to another. Pads on the surface so that when we're dealing with materials that we don't want to mar, it's not digging into our material. We want it to be built out of solid, heavy duty construction. I can tell you that a lot of these cheap bar clamps that I see is the first time you tighten them up, they bow like crazy. So you want it to, be, to almost look like it's overbuilt and sturdier than what you need it for. So we're not just looking for that um, ability to t hit a wide range of thicknesses or cross sections, but we're also looking for a reasonable amount of depth of throat so that should we need to, we have the capacity to be able to reach deeper in. Now, for this, I didn't need a lot of depth of throat because I want all my clamping pressure to be in between these pieces. So, um, always make sure that you never allow the threads to ride all the way to the bottom because if this gets cranked down too far, it actually will pop the foot right off of the handle. So always leave a couple of threads standing high on that. And always try to have the body of the clamp under the table instead of above the table where it could be a potential risk factor where you might um, you know, get yourself trapped in between it and a, a drill um, or something else. Because I can tell you that I've caught my arms on the ends of these a few times and woof, that is some kind of hurting that it puts on you, right? So another option for clamping where you don't need quite as much pressure are these um, quick release clamps, right? And you, you can find these everywhere now. And again, it's super fast and easy to use. Pull down and that allows you to slide forward or backwards. And in the fixed position, it ratchets forward. And again, I would go with a better quality clamp because the better quality clamp also has the ability for you to be able to take the end of that clamp off, switch it around to the opposite side like this, and now you have a spreader that allows you to push things apart from each other as well. So you might spend 20 or 25% more, but you're getting twice the functionality out of that um, uh, particular tool resource. So um, uh, that's my feeling on quick clamps. What I do not like to use quick clamps for is um, when I'm doing things like heavy duty drilling procedures because they are a little prone to loosen up under intense vibration. So that's my, that's my the long and the short of it for me on clamps. Let's move in now for a little closer look at what's going on on the top side where we're going to be drilling and driving.